Yeah. Hey everyone, I am here with a true story. I hope you guys are having a good night. It is from the book we've been reading. I love been loving this book. It was a miracle in itself that I got this book. If you haven't been watching the other videos, I got this book. This is a guidepost book. I had been wanting to order this book, buy it, and um, I hadn't had the money. And my friend's been sending me down books to read. Every time I send one back, she gives me a different one. And she sent this one down. She didn't even know I was wanting this one. And this is the one she sent, and I could not believe it. So now I get to read it and share it with you guys, and I don't have to buy it one. And I can send this back and, you know, because when I read the books, I pass them along. I give them away, so I'll give this back to her. And it's just, it was a miracle in itself. Okay, so this story is by Anne Garbazzi Evans, and it is called Trapped Beneath the Surf. That doesn't sound fun. Dad hit the brakes as the traffic inched to a crawl again. The refreshing scent of salty air blew through the windows. Are we there yet, Dad? Please hurry up. My brothers and I sh strained forward in our seat belts. A few more minutes, Mom said, passing back chocolate tasty cakes. I leaned over to my three-year-old sister. You'll love the beach, Joy. The sand, the water, the waves. A seagull called and dive-bombed the sand dunes ahead. I think I see the water. My little brother scooted to his knees. There it was, a glimmer of blue on the horizon. I can remember that. I had never seen the ocean. And the first time we went there, I just kept looking and looking for the water. I thought a river I seen was the ocean. I didn't know what. And when I finally seen it, it was like unbelievable. Never forget it. Dad slid into the beach parking lot and we tumbled out of the car. We hoisted boogie boards over our shoulders and drank coolers under our arms. The beach umbrella and folding chairs almost got lost in the rush. My flip-flops thumped across the sand. With a gleeful shriek, I ran into the water deeper and deeper until a wave cast me to my knees. We spent all morning in the waves taking breaks to eat popcorn and lure vast packs of seagulls with wonder bread. As the sun reached its zenith, the morning faded into afternoon, the waves became wilder. My dad took my little sister back to the hotel room for a nap. My mom rested under the umbrella. Since it was September, the beach was almost abandoned. My older brother, 15-year-old daredevil that he was, went out farther and farther to catch the biggest waves. My little brother, 10-year-old Kyle, thought he could do everything my older brother could. The ever-increasing waves splashed onto the pebbled beach, knocking down the towers I built. I held up my boogie board to block the surf. A wave plowed into me and pummeled me in my stomach. I looked out to sea, and another monstrous wave came crashing toward land. To the right, I saw my older brother riding high in the surf, both hands gripping his boogie board, but I couldn't see Kyle. Fifteen years later, I was definitely, I was definitely experiencing one of those low weeks we all have at times in life. I was 27 years old and the married mom of a two-year-old. Six months earlier, my husband had arrived home from a year-long deployment. It had been a hard year, and now I was sick, the sickest I'd felt in a long time. While I loved my son, I didn't really like a stay-at-home mom life combined with my husband's long hours of working, for the army was wearing me down by inches. To top it off, one more child friend just told me she no longer believed in God. That made me think about the stories I'd been studying in Acts the past few months. 
I'd reached that, I'd read that book at various times since my dad first introduced it to me 25 years earlier. But this time I saw something different. The chapters were full of wonders and miracles. Peter released from jail by an angel. Paul raising a dead man to life. The crippled beggar at the temple told to rise and walk. If God is real, why don't we see this stuff today? I wondered. Where are the angels, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the spiritual welfare? Warfare. Is life merely the natural that we can see? That's what my atheist friend believed. And that's what I was thinking about when my little brother Kyle, now six foot three and a law school student, stopped by. We sat down for a late lunch as the Colorado sunshine blazed through my windows. Ever seen a miracle? I asked, plunging my fork into the mashed potatoes. My son Jojo screamed that he didn't want the gravy on his potatoes. Oh, if your daddy was only home from work to deal with you, I wailed, and perhaps not my finest parenting moment. Actually, I think I might have, Kyle said. My head swung over to my brother. What? Remember when we used to go to the beach as kids? I nodded. One time when I was about 10, I went out really deep by myself. Yes, I'd abandoned my fork to rest both elbows on the table. A wave crashed over me and I swallowed water. I struggled to get back up for air, but the surf held me down. I thought I was drowning. Jojo whined about the vegetables on his plate and begged for cookies. But for once, his well didn't pierce right through my bones. Go on, Kyle, I said. I felt a hand wrap around mine and pull me to my feet. I gasped for breath and headed back to shore. Kyle speared the roast beef, and I thought it was Dad, but when I looked around, no one was anywhere near me. Kyle took a bite. Chills ran up and down my spine. So do you, I mean, was it an angel? I guess, I thought so at the time. Goosebumps rose on my arms. My brother had felt an angel's hand 15 years earlier, and I'd never knew it, know it. Maybe God was more active in this world than I'd thought, and I'd just never taken the time to look. My dad has a PhD in physics, and he certainly taught me not to take every story as gospel truth. But evidence of the supernatural is so clear, it can't be written off as mere coincidence. 2,000 years have passed since Jesus walked the earth, raising the dead and causing the lame to walk. But that doesn't mean God is no longer supernaturally at work in the world. In a country like mine, where the material world is king, people won't necessarily tell you about their experiences unless you ask. So next time you're sharing a cup of coffee with a Christian friend and the conversation lags, Ask him or her, have you ever experienced a miracle? You might be surprised at the response. So very true. I could tell you some stories myself.